Hello and welcome. It's so great to see you again, my dear Samjana. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you, Elena. How are you doing? I'm very happy to see you. <laughs> now, you are such uh, a wonderful, creative talent. Uh, you are a very gifted photographer. You're also a wise woman, uh, co-creator of the Moon Clocks and Inner Seasons. All of your work is very much dedicated to the feminine, the sacred feminine and feminine empowerment. And I invited you today to uh, share some of your um, insights and tools, especially for us women during this time, this critical time. So first of all, how have you experienced it for yourself and what, uh, what are the challenges that women especially might be facing? Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I first heard about uh, the pandemic and uh, well, about the, the immensity of it, um, when, when we started to realize it, I thought, wow, this is, this is like a, a global menstruation retreat, you know, it was an instant kind of like, oh, okay, we're all going to be forced to stay at home. Um, and, you know, I really took it on as, okay, I can do this. This is like having a big period, you know, like a long, you know, time at home when I'm resting, taking care of my body looking deeply into, you know, what life really means to me. And that's how I really approached um, the pandemic. I, 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 I could see how nature had kind of constructed this, you know, because we've been through this um, time of, of nature being, you know, uh, of just so much being taken from her, um, you know, and the balance being completely off where we're taking more than we're giving back. And that she needed to redress the balance and um so i wasn't too surprised when it happened it felt like it was this perfect construct to make us all stay at home and stop polluting the environment <laughs> so that she could focus on getting better because what we've seen in nature is you know a huge increase in forest fires and flooding and you know there's a, a big imbalance that's becoming more and more and more apparent to us and um so yeah, so I, 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 I kind of approached it with a, a level of positivity right from the start. I mean, yes, I was nervous and a bit scared, you know, about what might happen and who might I lose, you know, and, you know, and, and, and all of those things. But overall, I felt like this is the big shift, you know, this is that moment that we've all been waiting for. And although it doesn't look as pretty as we perhaps liked it to have, um, you know, it, it, on the surface, it seems very difficult and, 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 you know, there's death involved and death is always something difficult for us um, to, to deal with. Um, so on the surface, it seemed like this kind of, you know, dark thing, I'm going to be forced to stay at home, but it was like, okay, if this is what's necessary for us to make the change as a collective, as humanity, then I accept it you know and and so that really i think in that acceptance for me is that made the fears of a lot of the fears just fall away because it's like well i'm just going to trust nature i'm just going to trust life this is what is actually necessary in order for us all to move forward in harmony rather than us being in a constant you know um sort of you know uh, not a battle but you know this this kind of pull and push with nature and just sort of you know this I don't know about you, but I've always felt since I was a teenager that, you know, nature suffers so much at our hand. And, and I've always wished more would be done about that. And I've done as much as I can in my own world, in my own life, to be as eco-friendly as possible and, you know, make as much of a contribution as I can to help to restore that connection with nature. Um, very, very interesting. Thank you so much for that. Um, a very unique perspective. I mean, now that you mention it, it, it feels quite natural, but it hadn't occurred to me to think of this crisis as a giant menstruation event. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but it does make sense. It's, uh, it, it can be very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a deep release and deep letting go that is ultimately creative and positive. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's good to be reminded of this um, connection with nature that um, us women feel it more in our bodies if we tune in these cycles mm -hmm. um, and these, this is constant movement uh, that is not always um, 
collecting and amassing like our economy wants to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and more yeah. and more giving more like yeah. this um, greediness mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and this desire for more all the time. This is not actually a natural process, is it? Um, we yeah. do need to maintain a balance and let go sometimes, and and also to be co-creative and synergistic with other mm -hmm. elements, nature, environment, humanity, the animals, and so on. So thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you can bring this to us. I am very much a city girl. <laughs> uh, I grew up in a city. I've lived in cities all my life. And, and it's very good to have people like yourself um, in my life uh, who, who really help to anchor this awareness, um, even as we make use of technologies and so on, all the modern um, advancements that typically we associate with the city life. Uh, we can still use those and also maintain our contact with a natural rhythm and natural flow. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much for that. Um, so I know that you have created, I mean, I can see it behind you, this beautiful wheel. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I want to ask you about that. Could you explain to us a little bit more about this concept of the seasons and mm -hmm. how we can move through them more consciously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the concept of the seasons is something we're all familiar with, you know, um, you know, this spring, summer, autumn, winter, you know, these four phases of growth in spring of, um, of, um, sorry, birth in the spring and growth in the summer, and then uh, releasing in the autumn and then a stillness in the winter. So we all experience this annually, but we also experience this daily you know, we sleep at night, it's like winter, it's hibernation time, wake up in the morning, it's spring, midday is like summer, it's full sky, you know, the sun's high in the sky, and the autumn is just slowing down, you know, in order to prepare just for sleep. So this cycle isn't, um, it, it's, it, it, it appears all over the place. Um, you know, these are just two examples. Um, but I think everything in life has these cycles. This is the creative cycle of life. And anything that's living, existing, whether that's a relationship, whether it's, you know, um, a, a tree outside, uh, whether it's you as a human being, you know, you go through a life cycle of being your spring and being born and, you know, being your fertile years and then being in your sort of perimenopausal years and then into your, you know, into, into your winter, winter years, into your grandmother years, you know. So we all go through these, this, this natural cycle. And even relationships are the same, aren't they? When you meet someone, it's like everything's new and exciting and oh, everything's blossoming and blooming and woo, it's all really exciting. And it's a, it's a big adventure. And then we get into the summer of relationship, we start deepening our sexuality and you know, we start to really get to know each other and start to learn how to pleasure each other and to really connect with each other in a heart space and go really deep and, and learn to love each other. Um, and then we can often come into an autumn where, you know, like, uh, we really get to know each other <laughs> you know, where like the stuff, the shadow stuff starts coming up because we've been opened up by this love and this connection. Um, and then we can also go into a winter, which is often when relationships die, you know, we, we might part ways, we might rebirth them, you know? So I think, you know, we see this in, in pretty much everything and it's that creative cycle. Um, as I say, it, it appears within everything. Um, and by remembering this, remembering that everything is cyclical, it can bring us a lot of peace because, you know, everything in life rises and passes away. Nothing is permanent. There is no impermanence in our life. Everything rises and passes, rises and passes. And by adopting this, this um, feeling of the seasons and seeing it play out, we can really start to work with it just as we would if we were a gardener working in the working in nature you know you don't plant your seeds in the autumn you plant them in the spring <laughs> so when we start to work with it we can see our life start to blossom and our relationships start to blossom and we can um, we can look to nature for that wisdom of you know okay I, I recognize that I'm in this this part of my cycle right now how can I work with that rather than pushing against it and resisting it? How can I be with that and work with that? Um, to, yeah. So. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, do, do you feel um, that we are meant to be in sync with our internal cycles and the external cycles or could there be a disparity maybe? Yeah, I think there is disparity. Absolutely. I mean, I think, um, 
you know, certainly there's so many cycles going on all the time that we can't always be like 100% in sync. Um, you know, for instance, if you take a woman's menstrual cycle and you take the moon cycle, now these are two cycles that have the same length of time. You know, they're both around 29 days um, and yet they don't always run in sync. So often there are different energies that are available to us at different times. So for instance, you might be having your period um, in your inner winter season, you know, when, you, when you're in that place of rest, uh, your body, body is in a state of rest and renewal um, when it's good to be able to withdraw. But the moon might be full. And if the moon's full, then the moon's in this kind of, it's in its summer phase, you know, it's when we like to party and when, when we feel like we really want to communicate when we're in that really big heart space and, you know, we're quite energized. So when those two are happening, we've often got this polarity, you know, that's a polarity going on right there. <clears throat> and that can, that can be something to play with, you know, um, and certainly what I found as a woman is that my menstrual cycle tends to dominate um because it's very embodied and i'm very in tune with that so i find that i'm much more driven and guided and inspired not inspired but influenced by um, my hormonal nature than i am perhaps the moon but sometimes i feel the moon too and i'm like oh i feel torn i'm like this part of me wants to get out of bed and you know <laughs> go out and get busy and there's another part of me that just wants to stay under the covers so so yeah and i think you know that's part of the adventure it's part of the exploration is what what am i what am i experiencing right now is it something within me within my body or is it something outside of me that's in the cosmos you know um because often when things happen to us or we feel a certain way we can kind of we look for a, a reason don't we and sometimes we can look in the wrong place and sometimes it's way bigger than us it's actually just hey you know what there's a full moon there's a super moon going on out there right now and you might be feeling a bit crazy and a bit irritated and you might be having an argument with your partner but maybe it's just the moon maybe you just need to be more aware of that energy being there and just and just take a breath <laughs> you know and not blame yourself you know for what's happening right now because it, because we are influenced by nature um even if you live in a city you know um the moon especially is something that that does affect our bodily functions we're 70 percent water and you know what the sun does to the oceans you know i can't believe for a moment that we're not affected um and and so it's so yeah so there you know and, and so and, and when we are out of sync it can feel quite difficult in fact and, and and i found that by being more aware of what's going on you can as i say you can just find a greater peace with that and you can learn to um you know be kinder to yourself you know yes i can uh definitely vouch for that um i'm <laughs> very relieved after the full moon it makes me go a bit crazy the emotions are so uh -huh. strong <laughs> and it's, it's good for me to remember that it's okay you're not going mad <laughs> And, and, you know, possibly I'm overreacting. I'm, I'm aware that I can be more emotional than usual around the full moon. Mm -hmm. So it's good to be mindful. I, it also, um, yeah, it, it, it heightens intensity, doesn't it? So if we look at this big world event that mm -hmm. we're all moving through now, mm -hmm. uh, would you then liken it to a, a winter phase? Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i mean the when i said the global it's like a global menstruation event it's it's that inner winter energy um which is all about staying home you know going within um being uh with yourself really with yourself um it's about taking a good look at your life you know giving yourself that sacred pause that moment to say okay so i'm here and I need to be still right now. Um, what is here for me in that stillness? It's really about dropping in and asking yourself those questions about, you know, what is it I truly value? And what can I be really grateful for? Um, and using that in order to help us to move forward. Um, and while a lot of people I think have probably been doing that, I mean, um, I think we've all come to, you know, at this point in the pandemic now, I think we've come to a point where a lot of people are feeling fed up and they've had enough. Um, but what I'd say to that is that this is that moment right now is that, you know, we've come through this kind of, oh, the shock of it and, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, and this is how we have to adapt. So we've gone through this kind of the shock and the adaptation 
and perhaps we've invited the stillness maybe it's not worked for us maybe we've not been able to drop into that um, but this moment right now I think is really really key because before we go out back out into the world and it's not going to be full power when we go back it's going to be a slow trickle and things are not going to be the same you know what values are we taking with us you know because we don't necessarily know what we're going to be able to do you know we don't know what essentially so many people won't know what they're going to do for a job they don't know uh, you know because they're out of work now um many people are not even sure they want to go back to their jobs probably you know they've probably had that epiphany of kind of wow this is really not what i want to be doing you know so you know we can't necessarily plan everything and say this is what i'm going to be doing but what we can do is go into this new paradigm this new era this new this new life with a set of values that we can make decisions from you know good foundation where you can say this is what's really important to me you know um it's whether that's spending more time with your family whether it's you know learning new skills or you know creating a new job for yourself or whatever it is um you know, it might just be, you know, just cultivating more love in your life, <laughs> you know, spending more time with your partner. Um, you know, it, there'll be something there that you felt, wow, I really could use more of this, you know, or that really isn't serving me. So if that's not serving you, what, what goes in that, what goes in that void, you know? And I think that's the most important thing we can take from this moment is asking ourselves, what do we truly value? And if it's freedom, a lot of people are feeling that the freedom has been taken away. What does freedom mean for you? You know, freedom is different for everybody. For some people, freedom is just having the ability to create and be creative. That's enough for some people. Um, for other people, freedom is, you know, is that personal freedom. You've got to go around and do what you want and go where you want, that kind of thing. But if you can't have that, what can, how can you bring an element of freedom into your life moving forward under the confines of what's going on around us? Um, so that's i think you know that this moment is that precious moment of this is a great time to just drop in and ask yourself you know what have i learned from this before i leave this space before we move back into the world what am i taking with me you know what have i learned what am i really truly grateful for in my life and how can i bring more of that um into my world that i really truly value um yeah yes the winter energy is uh, it's about silence and wisdom yeah. and letting the distractions fall away exactly. so that we can really feel and know the truth of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it can be a painful experience if we haven't taken a good look at ourselves for a long time. Mm -hmm. And if we don't actually like what we see, if we're honest with ourselves, how we've been uh, living our lives and the choices mm -hmm. we've been making. Um, so... There has been a challenge, I think, uh, for a lot of us, but hopefully we have found something of value and something, as you say, that will motivate us to move forward in a new way, mm -hmm. um, in a more free way or a more creative way, mm -hmm. or <laughs> inspirational way or joyful way, whatever mm -hmm. uh, the quality is in us that wants to be um, brought forth into the mm -hmm. world in, in yeah. the spring that is coming next. Okay. <laughs> So uh, when you are counseling women, mm -hmm. um, what, what would you advise them? Is, is this something especially useful uh, as we go through these different seasons? Do you, do you have some special um, tools or resources that you recommend? Yeah, so I think um, the most important thing is to look at what the seasons mean to you. It's a great place to start, you know, is to look at how you feel about the seasons of the year. Um, you know, what, it, what is it you like about each of the seasons? What do you dislike, you know, um, and what kind of energies are there for you? You know, how you feel? What do you feel like doing? Um, because while I can sort of, I can give you a set of words, I can give you a, a map, you know, I have this menstrual, I have this cycle map, which has all of these words in it, that which can give you some ideas, is really personal, you know, your experience of the seasons. So it's good to really just to, drop in and sort of just think about you know how do i feel in each season what do i feel like doing how much do i like it or dislike it and for those that you don't like very much there's a gift there for you there's something else to warm up to there's something else to 
you know step into um with that um like for me you know i've always had excruciatingly painful periods which is how i got into teaching about menstrual cycle awareness through my own you know long journey with um of, of healing that and um for me on the other side of the pain and the and, and all of that was this huge like very inspirational um deep connection with myself with nature um and now it's a completely different experience you know it's it's a time for me to really drop into myself um and 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 find that inner wisdom um because for some people watching this they'll be like wow you know what i'd rather my period just wasn't there uh, I just like to work through it. I just drink coffee and I just forget that it's even happening. Um, and what I'd say to you in that is maybe there's something more, you know, maybe there is, maybe you're missing something, you know, by busying through it because actually your body is asking you to do something else. And if you experience period pain, then it's a lot of it probably is your resistance to, you know, really stepping back. And I know it's not always possible in our lives, you know, depending on what our jobs are and everything, but just, just to really look at it from a different point of view, that it's not an inconvenience, that it is actually part of a, a cycle. And that part of the cycle that you love when you're full of energy and you're ovulating and you're, you know, <laughs> you're, you're in that, that high energy of connection and love and, 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 you know, when you're feeling really, really good at that time of the month, you know that's just one half of the cycle and when you go deeper with the other half of the cycle you get more joy more connection more love more intimacy you know when you when you balance it out and um, so if, it, if you're looking for more of that in your life then actually making space to drop in um can really really help um but yes i, I mean i do um if people want a free resource and they want to see i have um, a free download on my website um which uh, gives you a little guidance on um, you know how to look at these four parts the four phases of the menstrual cycle but they are just a mirror of the seasons because I mean that's what our wombs do they create life <laughs> um, whether we're making a baby or you know whether we direct the energy toward making an actual baby or whether we direct the energy towards creating a new project or towards nurturing a relationship uh, this cycle is there for us to tap into and when we do life just in my experience life just you know women just step into their creativity they start to heal stuff they start to move through pain points that they haven't been they've been felt stuck with you know um because they've really been able to to work with their menstrual cycle it's 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 a it's a growth cycle you know it's like the best personal development tool for women it's like right there you know like it takes you through every month of a, a moment of stillness reflection and an introversion you know where you can go in and you can you know really look at your life with with honesty and and sort of say okay this is working for me this isn't working for me so it's like a monthly checkup you know um just like you do kind of at new year i could compare it to what you do at new year everybody at new year goes okay what happened last year yeah so it's that moment you know of like what happened what was good what wasn't good what do i want to take into the new year and you know and, and it's that same cycle um of just you know then coming into the spring birthing your ideas taking action on what you imagine what you vision the things you need to change coming into the summer of connection and love and really enjoying what you're creating enjoying what you're bringing into your life and then the autumn of reviewing that pms part that most women hate is actually where there's some really juicy gifts right there because that's where the shadow comes up and that's where we're really invited to take that deep look at ourselves and say okay i need to change something here you know i'm irritated by this this is bothering me um maybe i need to put in some stronger boundaries around this time and so it's that creative cycle so if you're wanting to get ahead in life if you're wanting to move ahead with anything in your life working with the menstrual cycle or the moon cycle which is similar will help you in propelling you forward because every month you'll be going through this cycle of reviewing and growing and releasing and reviewing and growing, releasing <laughs> so you can see it's like a rebirth every month which is a really powerful thing to give yourself really powerful yes it's uh it's wonderful to be reminded of this um natural flow of things and mm -hmm. a natural way to be a natural way to live to create Mm -hmm. um, because we're so used to being in our heads mm -hmm. and in our culture um, 
the typical left brain uh, intellect ta uh, seems more significant and tends to be uh, the guiding principle mm. and how things are organized and structured and what is deemed important and useful. Um, but this isn't necessarily in harmony with how nature works uh, with the solar cycles and its yin and yang and all the elements and the interplay of the energies uh, taking us through um, different processes and uncovering new gifts and releasing something more and then something new emerges and so on. And, and it's uh, very much uh, down to us women to remember this in ourselves and bring more of it forward into our lives and our worlds. Um, so I do see it as a great opportunity and it seems to me that all of us both men and women are maybe waking up to this uh, a new um, appreciation, I would say, of, of the world and each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remain optimistic. Uh, <laughs> so back, back to those wonderful resources. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you about rituals. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know every month uh, there is one ritual that I see. You make up this beautiful mandala, mm -hmm. and you share this all on social media, and it's it's such a, a wonderful blessing, you know, because you feel all the prayers and all the love and attention and the mm -hmm. and the presence, the life that goes into it. Um, what what ritual might be useful for us at this time? Uh, some something simple maybe that we can do. Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'd say yeah, taking that moment to create a, a, a space for yourself to take a little mini retreat, you know, to take that sacred pause, um, to really uh, focus focus on that on that moment. It's just that perhaps you can just create a day or a half day to yourself, or a couple of hours if you've got lots of kids. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's just to create a moment of, of of for yourself to connect with you know your higher self um and to nature as well because nature i mean she brings so much healing you know this is this is the great thing about coming back in tune with the cycles is that we we really connect to what it is to be powerful creators and powerful healers and you know and 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 and, and the ability to rebirth ourselves so by having this moment of stillness and just connecting with nature and just accepting that you are part of nature you know realizing that you know We've just been trained to believe that humans are separate because we're really not. We're part of this massive, you know, we're all part of this biodiverse system. We're all just in this wheel together. And that's one thing this pandemic has really taught people is that we are all in this together, you know, and coming back to nature. Um, so, yeah, so creating um, a, a, a space, a ritual for yourself, you know, telling people that you live with or whatever that you're going to be doing this and just give yourself that time um to 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 do something and it might be that you want to draw um if you're a creative person or to draw um you know you might want to you know draw some draw a picture or a, a feeling or um or color something in if you don't like drawing um if you've got a garden you might like to adopt uh, my uh, menstruation ritual which i do every month is to go and collect um beautiful things in nature leaves flowers twigs um berries um you know uh, and to create an offering to the earth you know to create a mandala um which is by placing them in in circles and different positions to just create something beautiful um and i find that's an incredible way to connect with the seasons i mean i do it every month and and what it does it makes you realize just how fast everything's moving it teaches you so much. I mean, I could do a whole, we could do a whole talk just on this, you know, it's just like by doing this mandala every month, you realize that, you know, oh, those flowers that I picked last month for my mandala, they're not there anymore. They've moved on, you know, and now this has come in its place, um, you know, and, and it's just this constant reminder that everything is moving and in this cycle, that we're not stagnant, you know, life is not static. Um, and there is this constant um, energy there of, creation of movement of forward motion of uh, cyclical nature you know because those flowers will be back next year <laughs> you know um so so yeah creating perhaps a, a, a you know a, a moment for yourself in the garden just to sit and just to be with nature um the one thing i like to do before i make the mandala is uh, i mean I, I pick everything with consciousness and say thank you thank you thank you to the plants um, as i take and i take what i think i need 
um, and I find a space to do it. I mean, I like to clear a space in the woods generally. I have made them on grass. I've even made them in a fire pit before. Um, but just finding a place that feels good for you to, to make, um, you know, something circular. And, uh, and I, I always, uh, before I start, is I place my hands on the earth and ask the earth. I just say, I'm here, I'm listening and show me what you want to express. Let's make something beautiful and stuff just comes you know i don't design anything in advance i just place things and you just get a, a, a sense of where things want to go um and yeah it often surprises me they're always different i mean i've been doing it for three years and they always come up with a different pattern and a different you know i mean you can choose choose a number choose a four or a five or an eight to work with something like that that can help but uh yeah just some kind of ritual to bring you back to the to your essence as as a woman or a man you know is part of the cycle of life as part of the natural world because what that does is it reminds you that actually you are always supported you are never ever alone you know you always have the support of the seasons and the cycles and the biosphere of life you know is always there and life always wants to succeed so if you've ever noticed that even when there's a disaster she always comes back you know like it's always like that might seem like it's a bad thing but she always comes back with some gift at the end of it you know there's always a reason to whatever it is that's happening and um and i think that you know coming back to nature as human beings you know as part of the natural world will really help us to find greater peace um greater connection with each other you know less separation more connection um and just help us to remember that we're elemental you know because you know what is it that makes you alive and i know it's like the beat of your heart which is what it's electricity it's you know and you know it's electricity running through your body you know what, what makes you alive and the blood in your body is like the water of the earth you know, flowing around, taking all the nutrients around, cleansing, clearing the body, and your bones are like the earth, you know, they're like the, the, the skeleton that holds everything in place, you know, and, um, and your temperature is fire, you know, that keeps you alive, you know, your body temperature, um, and the air is your breath, and it's such a powerful thing to remember that we are elemental beings, you know, we're not just you know we're just we're just not these individuals with this is my job and this is my life and you know this is what we do and we're way more than that we are a living breathing pulsing animal <laughs> you know we are part of the world even if you grew up in a city i grew up in a city too <laughs> i'm a londoner <laughs> yes yes indeed um yeah i was i was just uh reminded now as you were speaking about all these different elements that make us up mm -hmm. um how important it is to bring that awareness into our lives here in the cities i'm very partial to things that work for city people <laughs> like myself so i mean i don't have a garden you know i it's I, it's not so immediate for me to just mm -hmm. go out and pick out some flowers but um i mean there's still parks obviously mm -hmm. uh, there's still some natural elements or some trees around mm -hmm. uh, so what what i have found is good for me is to to do really simple things very basic things but bring that awareness which makes them a ritual mm. um so uh one of the things i do every morning is to drink a glass of water with awareness and a prayer or a dedication uh to to a quality that i want to bring forth to create mm. for myself and my life to share with others and you know, in my mind, I just speak a couple of sentences and then drink the water mindfully. And already that brings me to that special uh, place of connection yeah. with, uh, with nature, with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, then through the day, I spend some time doing some breath practice. Mm -hmm. So again, bring awareness to the breath. Mm -hmm. And that's very simple. We can just take conscious breaths. It doesn't have to be a special technique, although there are plenty around. Uh, if anybody wants to look, that's a lot <laughs> and mm -hmm. so that connects with the air element mm -hmm. um, then just look out the window or maybe walk in the sunshine just breathe it in let that come through feel it on my skin just mm -hmm. be conscious about receiving blessings of the sun mm -hmm. and if possible i do that sometimes when the weather is better usually <laughs> because i like my comforts i might mm -hmm. take my shoes and my socks off and just be barefoot um, for a little bit 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, earthing is extremely powerful, and that's earthing you're talking about barefoot on the ground. Exactly. Yeah, it's hugely yeah. powerful, and I mean, it's, I love your morning practice of you know just drinking a glass of water and and connecting in that way. And um, yeah, I mean, if you don't have a garden and you want to create a mandala, you could use crystals or you know um, things you have around your house. You know, I say you can't go out and collect things, but maybe you maybe you collect crystals and you could do something with that or. Even, you know, pieces of jewelry. <laughs> Anything. I think as women, yeah. we need to have beauty in our lives. Something yeah, absolutely. <laughs> delicious and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's good to honor our senses and our sensuousness and, and, and bring that deliciousness. Even mm. in a small way, it makes a big difference for us to uh, care and to nurture ourselves. Mm. Um, and and we do share very generously. I think um, a, a happy woman is a delight to be around. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we don't have to be happy all the time. Remember? No. No, that's what we need to allow no, more of. That's also is, yes. is that you know is that it's okay you know if we're not feeling happy all the time, um, and you know those times when we're not feeling happy, sometimes it's best to just you know, stay home or talk to a good friend and, and just work through it, you know, and those feelings are okay. You know, we don't have to think that we have to be that way all the time. It's really important, I think, to accept those parts of ourselves lovingly and just say it's okay for me to feel this way, mm. you know, and to really accept that back into us and uh, ourselves and just to, just to direct some loving kindness and some compassion towards those parts of ourselves that do seem ugly and difficult and challenging and you know because they're there because of some kind of wounding that we you know some something that's hurt us in the past generally and we just have to look deeper into that and that's where again working with the cycles is because it gives you those moments of kind of oh okay I'm in my winter phase now now I can go deep and I can look at these things and I can deal with that and I can heal these things and move on so I think acceptance is a very powerful thing isn't it because it brings us into the present moment it stops us worrying about the past or the future and reduces the fear and just sort of you know as i was saying earlier you know acceptance of this situation that was happening just helped me to come into a place of peace and realization that i could do something with it that it wasn't necessarily a, uh, something that was going to constrict me it was an opportunity you know um yes and that's another um aspect of what a feminine being needs is is to feel emotions and to give herself mm -hmm. the permission to feel them without seeing them as problems to be solved <laughs> yes uh, because well, it's life isn't it it's, yeah. it's the experience of life and yes. yeah it's it's good to to be reminded of that so thank you so much yeah i mean uh, nature really can help us to heal these things you know again i mean the more we get I, I, you know i really do believe deeply that nature can bring us back to ourselves it can bring us home you know to a place of of peace even if you're not you know if you, if you are living in a city you know you can still you know decide you want to watch a, a lovely naked nature documentary you know i mean just seeing the pictures and the images and just being you know instead of watching some movie with all this action thriller kind of stuff going on you know perhaps just watch a bit of nature you know um even that in itself can bring so much peace to us um you know, I, I, as I was a city girl, I remember the first time, the first time I really realized that nature was magic, shall we say, was I was 19 years old and I had been living in London. I'd done a little bit of traveling and hiking around and realized I had this real love of nature. But I'd been camping at the bottom of this waterfall and I woke up in the morning and I felt really horrible. You know, somewhere when you just wake up, you just feel, oh just like oh what happened <laughs> you know I just didn't want to talk to anyone thankfully my boyfriend was still asleep at the time and I just felt icky inside I just felt heavy and unhappy and something just you know I looked up I got out of the tent looked at the waterfall and it said come come like this to me you know and uh, so I went up and I sat by the waterfall found a little spot where no one else was going to bother me. And I sat there for about an hour, just watching the water come down, hearing the sound, as you say, just coming into a feeling of being in, in my body, feeling the spray of the water and the sunshine coming and just hearing the sounds. And this is what nature does. It brings us into our body. It makes us be fully present. Because in our houses, what have we got? No wind, no sun, <laughs> 
we control everything outside we're given the opportunity to experience something and so experience the this this these feelings of being this waterfall and um within an hour i was feeling much better and i came back down and i was you know skipping down you know, not literally but you know like energetically kind of skipping you know i'd really just completely transformed the way i felt uh, and sometimes that's all it is it's just disconnection you know from something greater often our sad feelings of any of depression or not being good enough or whatever it's just disconnection from the fact that you know we're part of something much bigger um and when we bring ourselves back i mean that's what i've been doing during a pandemic if i've been fit because yeah i mean there's loads of stuff going on and it can be really heavy sometimes you know when you connect to the world and you see what's going on and you know my dad's got covid at the moment and and he's in hospital and uh, but it's like okay how can i come back to a place of feeling empowered and it's for me it's always going for a walk or you know um and even if you live in a city there are gardens as you say <laughs> yes. and nature is everywhere there are always birds around or somebody's planted a nice flower box or you know there's always nature to be found wherever you are in the world it's it's always there um maybe you've got your own flower box <laughs> I, I have some lovely potted plants, actually. Um, yeah, it's great. <laughs> they do make a big difference. Yes. <laughs> they do. It's like having something else living. It's like having a pet or something. Yes, exactly. It's, uh, it's not made of concrete. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> having something green, because green is that lovely color. Something of, green know, life life. And I love watching how I, I turn them. I turn them so that they're facing the sun from yeah, different angles. And, and, you know, these imperceptible movements that the leaves make, you don't notice uh, you don't notice them in that moment, but you see them, you know, a few hours later, they, they've shifted. <laughs> they've shifted to get more of the sun. And I, and, and I like uh, this kind of little dance with my plants. Oh, great. <laughs> great that you've noticed these, these tiny little, you know, I mean, obviously, yes. you know, you are very uh, in connection with these things. And, you know, because these are very small, these minutiae, you know, we could easily miss, you know. But it's just about awareness, isn't it? And and it's a, and that awareness of, you know, as I was saying, like you're saying with your plant, you know, changing in its leaves and mm -hmm. the trees changing through the seasons, you know, giving their blossoms and fruits and then autumn and then and then coming back down to the earth and then being in stillness over the winter. All of these changing things just remind us that we are like that too, you know, that we are constantly changing. And then we don't get so stuck in our in those difficult feelings because we know it's just something that wants to move through and you know, um, it's just yeah just remembering that we're cyclical is so important yeah. thank you so much it's been an absolute delight uh talking to you today and hearing your beautiful sharing all these uh, great insights you've kindly shared mm -hmm. uh, so any final message for our listeners uh, final message i'd say uh you know trust you you know this already you know that you've just forgotten that what you need to do is remember you know it's just to remember that you are as powerful as the sun and as strong as the trees and as fluid as the oceans and the rivers you know and it's just we have just forgotten this connection and you know if you're a woman then you've got this cycle happening within you so just trust that you you know this it's there it's within you already that this isn't something you need to go out and buy or invest in or whatever it's just you know just come back to your body your body's natural wisdom and and trust that you know the way you know how to navigate this this void that we're in right now is going to pass and you know you can you can do this you can absolutely do this i have every confidence in you even though i've never met you because i know if you're a human being <laughs> if you're living you're breathing you're watching this i know that you have it within you because you know we are nature all of us wonderful thank you so much dear samjana i wish you a wonderful day today and uh, i hope to be able to meet in person again soon and, and share a lovely hug <laughs> thank you thanks elena thank you i'll see you next time